Hey, what's up? You're all very welcome. Very, very welcome to episode 41. 41! For Wednesday the 10th. 10th of January. Fuck me. You're all very welcome. If you're first time tuning in, you know where you found it. Subscribe to that and uh, look after it, yeah. The, if it is on iTunes, you're listening to it. Give it an out rating at the end. Apparently that's a good thing. I don't know enough about these things. People who are in the know have told me. Um, people with very successful podcasts and whatnot that rating is on iTunes keeps the gods of I- iTunes and gods of Apple very happy. Um, it's Tom O'Mahony here, your host. If you want to find me anywhere, if you want to find this, if you have any questions, you can easily find fucking anywhere, really. Anyway, you can say, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. Just Tom O'Mahony Comedy will find you me. Find you me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and the Chatty Snaps, which I've been kind of lacky in. I kind of wonder what the point of Chatty Snaps is when there's... That's the dog in the background having a bit of a piss attack, if anybody's wondering. Hey, dog, what the fuck is wrong with you? Come here, you bollocks. Come on. There you go. Yeah, anybody new to the podcast, we got a, a schnauzer back in... In whatchamacallit, back in... Fuck, when did we get her? April, March? I, I don't know. She was born in March, anyway. But the dog... It's one of those dogs that... Just shy of actually talking. Just fucking shy of it. Um, absolute fucking lunatic. So sit yourself down there. You're on the podcast, dog. You're all very welcome. If anybody who follows me will have seen... The, the snarky common pictures I put up people seem to like it um, but yeah the chatty snaps is Tom Bear O'Mahony they won't allow me to change it to Tom O'Mahony comedy they followed some old email address and just named it I don't know how I don't know Listen, I'm sure most people listening to this will know far more about these things than I do so yeah and it, listening over the last couple of weeks you'll know that uh, Panto Land is over it's done with good god I, I mean it was relaxing to finish it, but it was a weird day the following day because you're like, what? What do you mean I'm not? What? What do you mean I'm not performing to fifteen hundred people? It's a, uh, it's a bit of a you don't know what to be fucking doing with yourself because you are programmed, especially as a comedian, you're kind of you, you you're kind of coming up with your own plan throughout the day anyway, like getting to gigs and stuff like that. But this was the first time in in like a year where you're. Your day is laid out, which I'm sure a lot of people listen to this and go, shut the fuck up, Tom. My day is laid out for me every week. I don't have to focus. But this was, it was a, it was, it was a good one. It was a good one. I didn't have any broken ribs like I did last year. Um, the knee was flaring up a small bit. The old bad busted knee, no big deal. It was no rugby injury. I'm sure you know yourself. <laughs> no, as a, one of the older people on the, on the watch we call it, and, and by a fair bit, I don't mind telling you a lot of 20 year olds and 21 year olds dancing on this fucking thing and whatnot. Um it was I held it together a few people's legs blew out um, the likes of uh, Richie Hayes poor bastard his, his calf blew out he held it together though strapped that fucker and got through it uh, Richard Lynch his ankle blew out um, you wouldn't think these all sound like injuries like we're playing pro fucking rugby or something but no, it's just repetitive strain injury tends to, to kick in with these things. But yeah, life is back to normal, back gigging. I'm in the Hapity Bridge Inn this weekend, if anybody's around. Um, dog, shut the fuck up. Not being abusive to the dog here, but this whining shit is just it's not interesting to me. There you go. There you go. She just wanted to get into herself. She'll be in there now. She wanted to get back back out, but she'll look at that dogs for you. Um, yeah. Gigs coming up. Fuck, I don't even have the diary with me. But I do know I'm in the Hapenny this weekend and I'm in I'm in Cashel the following weekend, I think. I'll put all these up later on this evening. I'm going to put update uh, all the gigs on my Facebook page. Like I said, the, the website, I need to sit down. With. Like You lose your life, basically, to a show. You're five weeks gone, essentially, down the country and you just lose your life and you try you go yeah sure look at in between shows I'll get stuffed on you fucking don't you don't because you're just stuffing food into your face and uh, you're not re- you're no firm of mind to be doing fuck all else because you're just going right we got another show coming up in a couple of minutes so you just just it, it it's all consuming as the person would say but this weekend is going to be fun this weekend we're having uh, some of the sisters and their children up we're having a 
post Christmas dinner but I'm not doing turkey and shit so I'm doing pheasant and rabbit and venison all of which you can guess you can guess if you've listened to this podcast before you can guess how they've been acquired um, so that should be a fun dinner and like I said Sunday in the, the Hippity Bridge Inn what else has been happening fucking hell nothing nothing that's pretty much it life is just starting back now some fun gigs coming up some good stuff that I can't tell you about just yet but um some fun stuff coming down the line throughout the year ever the professional uh, batteries cut out on this <laughs> I don't know where I lost you gang you think I'd spot the red light I did eventually so I, do, I have no idea I have no idea where we cut out I had some spare batteries so I stuck them in good Jesus Christ what's wrong with me I'm recording on the Zoom here. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, lads. I don't know. What the Christ is wrong with me? So, yeah, getting back to it all. So, going to miss all the gang. We had a good old uh, night out on the, the final dinner. There has to be... They have a uh, an awards night, which you do. You kinda, A lot of teams have them too when they go on tour and stuff. Like, they have a whole in court and stuff. And that's kind of what I did was I picked out points where people kind of fucked up throughout the... The season. I had plenty of myself, but I was the one giving the awards out, so I didn't do myself in at all. I gave I although I did give myself the chief bluffer award because I can near sing, near dance. So um the bizarreness of having me in, in the old pod, or in the old panto of it all. So who the oh, Jesus Christ, I just started catching up on telly. Who has seen this black mirror thing? Oh for fuck's sake. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I'm not going to keep you long here now, but fuck me. Because I watched the first episode of the very first one. Has I, If you have, haven't seen it, you have to start watching this shit. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Oh, fuck. This stuff sticks in your head. This, it, man. I mean, there's times when this stuff is heavy, but this is heavy. Like, this is properly heavy. And then I find, like, the first one. Oh, my God almighty. That is, oh, Jesus Christ. I don't even know how the actors went through it. Fuck. <laughs> Hell. It's, yeah. Fuck. Jesus. But it is, it's, it makes incredible watching this Black Mirror. And everybody, I think, is, is kind of getting on board with it. Season four has just come out. So I haven't gone, so we're, we'll, there'll be a, bin, a bit of a binge watch. So I'm into, heading into season three. So we'll see what that's like. But, oh, fucking hell. And then I find out online the reason why it's called Black Mirror is because that's what the television is when it's shut off. It's just looking back at you. It's like, oh my, that, that's even creepier. That's as creepy as, like, a little blonde child singing in the corner of a room just staring at the wall do you know those <laughs> playing with a puppet you know those fucking ones Jesus Mary and Joseph my beloved monster finding one at the weekend um, speaking of which I they beat Connacht or whatever but I, I I ran into the legendary David Wallace he was at the Panto he's a Cork originally from Cork I think but he's he's he, anybody who has ever heard of of the game rugby will have heard of David Wallace. He played for um, Munster, the Lions, Ireland. So his kid wanted to photograph with me. I was like, absolutely. And uh, I, I'm guessing David did too. I'm guessing David did as well. He's probably listened to this. So hopefully going to have David on the podcast in the next couple of weeks. A um, couple of other in- very interesting guests lined up. So um, I'm going to plow straight on. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. The crack has been 90 so far, lads. Fucking hell, what a shit show. Batteries running out in this thing and everything. What an absolute fucking scandal. I'll keep you up to date, like I said, on the gigs and all the rest. I'm going to put it up on the Facebook page. So that's the Tom O'Mahony uh, comedy on Facebook. I'm going to put up all the the new gigs that are definitely locked in for now. There's a ton more that are kind of... We're bouncing around dates back and forth because I have other shit now is after starting up with comedy workshops and stuff like that. So it's going to throw me a small bit. But um, as far as gigs go... I'll be readily available to be found by most. Um, and I, like I said, I'll stick them up on that and you can catch them. This week's guest, final of the Panto people. But um, Leanne isn't just Panto. She is a fitness guru, um, inspirational figure, very uh, savvy on social media. But uh, the person, the, the, she isn't portraying a caricature. Of herself. That's exactly the kind of person she is if you do follow her online. Um, a lot of people do she's 110% a professional but one of the soundest people you'll ever meet as well um, this was her first ever podcast as well just like Samantha um, and she flew it not a bother to her pure pro not a fucking bother this woman can sing dance fucking owns a gym Jesus Christ has been on telly like she consummate professional but a 
a funny, funny cat. We recorded this because we were struggling. It was between shows. We were like, where the fuck are we? Because there's staff everywhere around the, the watchman call. You need some level of silence. So we found this room that should, I think they just store all the chairs in, which I will put up a picture on Twitter later on. The picture of the chair room from which we, it was the most, uh, yeah, unfanciest place I think I've ever recorded I love saying that wait well, yeah yeah it was definitely the unfancy but it, it it lent itself fine to it it was uh, it was all we really needed but it was yeah when you see the picture you're like oh okay you really just were struggling for fucking it had a huge building the only space we could find was a fucking room that had chairs in it anyway pressing on I shut my fucking trap and move straight on into the legendary Leanne Moore There we go. Oh, you're very welcome. Is this your first ever podcast? This is my first is ever it? podcast experience. Oh my goodness! I have to say, your studio is something else. Thank you, thank you. I've been working <laughs> on. Well, I have. Well, potentially, we're not. See, they say there's only what seven degrees of separation between anybody. Mm-hmm. I did a podcast that would be quite close to your professionality, if you get me. In Dave's gym, Go Gym, I recorded <gasps> with. Gordon Hayden. Yes, I know Gordon well. Out, out in Go Gym. Um, out by where the pool once was, but oh. is now becoming a dojo. Do you know it's yes. becoming... Yes, you were on the pool deck, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so... Um, and then the owners of Go Gym are my business partners in Limerick. Go Gym Limerick here. There so you go. there you go. And I'm also engaged to David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Small little... Makes it handy. <laughs> Makes it handy. We were talking uh, and uh, the amount of people that actually fucking love Homeland like that actually listen to this as well. Not enough people, I think, even know how good Homeland actually no, is. and this is one thing. I have seen all of the Netflix um, released series or, uh, yeah, episodes and series, basically. But I was on to Dave, who's my other half, saying, Dave, you need to watch it. I know it's right up your street. You need yeah. to give it a go. He was like, no, 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 no. I'm not getting into a series because, you know, you can't just let them Yeah, no, you can't. So we had a day off from Panto there the other day. Told everybody I wasn't getting dressed and I was going to Netflix and chill, Love which it. is exactly what I did. Love we started it. watching season one of, of Homeland. Sure, I woke up at 4am the next morning and Dave is still watching season two beside me. Like, <laughs> couldn't go to sleep. I'm like, I told you, you would be. But hooked. that's a dangerous one to give him. It's not like any other. T- it's like... because they finish every single episode oh, with Jesus a cliffhanger. Christ, like it's they just... always give you, like they always leave you wanting more. She's Nothing on... is reckoned. She's class, though, isn't she, Claire Danes? She is a sensational actress. And I was there then. Like, I was like, what age is she? Do you remember her in Romeo and Juliet years ago? Like, oh my God, that was Claire Danes. Jesus, right? right? Yeah, she was like only seventeen in that. She's thirty-eight or something, thirty-nine now. But I had to Wikipedia the whole thing because I was like. How was she in Romeo and Juliet when I was in school? I remember watching that in school. And right, I had made that connection still so at all. Young on the thing. Oh my god! Imagine it's the wrong person completely. <laughs> I'm almost sure it's that's the when person. you find people interacting at podcasts. Yeah. No, in fairness, I know. <laughs> what did she say? I know. I'm sounding. The people that listen to mine are sound enough. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, Tom fucked that up there. Don't worry about it because they know I don't Google anything on the podcast. I think it's a total cheat. So normally, what we'll do is if we're both totally wrong, that's what we are. Okay, and that's where perfect. we're leaving it. There's nobody here to to conflict it with me or no, to there's fight not, with me anyway, there's not. So and th- that's the thing, people <coughs> like other mates of mine to do podcasts and stuff, and the amount of bitchiness they'll get from people going, "Actually, you're fined in 1984." <laughs> I, I'd I'd put like I'd put a solid twenty quid on it that she was. Would in you? Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go against you on it because I do a solid know twenty. A solid twenty, <laughs> as opposed to yeah, I would have been in for fifteen if You'd I was. You get in a the, pizza and a can of coke for twenty quid. You yes, you would. <laughs> Jesus, I, I, I can't actually corroborate her that fact, but I definitely think it was her. No, and she's a fantastic actress. Oh my but god! But I have to tell you that my favourite Homeland character is actually Peter Quinn. Like, oh, you have a, a right soft spot. I for Peter have Quinn. a massive soft spot. It, it started off. I actually hated him because he was so mean to Carrie in that season two, but then I just. I, I'm not going to because in case anybody's listening that hasn't watched Homeland and they really need to because it should be on everybody's to do. Oh my god! I'm not going to tell you anymore, but Peter Quinn is amazing. Do you remember when this will tell you? I this. Do you know people spot different parts of your your 
your psyche and your your I suppose your personality and you go oh, I don't know really you saw that there's times when people say things to me I'm going are you sure and then I'll say it back to Natasha and she'll go oh no Tom yeah yeah no they were totally right there like, like but there was a bit where do you remember when Quinn was kind of you're going to give away a no no this isn't here. this okay. isn't a plot but he he did go through and did a bunch of killing basically oh. went through and, and obliterated an entire house of people basically yes and he was coming over the other side and he there was an there was an element of just deadness in his eyes and he was like that's the job done yeah and I swear to God at that point Natasha went Jesus I could I went what <laughs> there was something in his eyes that she just sat that sat up well, you see, I would be hoping she that she would go, no, those little moments where you get to see the humane side no, of Peter Griffin. she genuinely went, wow, I could totally, if you didn't, if I was not married to you, I could totally see that would be right up your, that is right Holy up your street. Holy Lord. No, and it, the thing with Peter Quinn is as well, and like this is gas for me because I don't fancy celebrity. Yeah, man. I was like, surprised I when you picked him up, but he's, I, he's like cool as hell though, isn't he? Cool. Like, he's, he's cool like, as cool, hell. That's what it is. Well. He is cool. <laughs> um, so I don't know what it is about him. Although recently, I have to say, and this is completely not cool, so I don't know why this is happening, but Zac Efron is just like, he's waiting. Is it the cardboard cutout that has made it into the no, panto? I think it's the greatest showman. Like oh, the, I didn't see it. Is I it? haven't seen it yet, but the girls are always listening to it in the dressing room, uh, the, the, the soundtrack. Yeah. And I'm obsessed with watching videos on it now on YouTube. And I'm just obsessed with him. I mean, he can sing, he can dance, he can act. He's got a six pack. He's got an eight pack. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, and I, that's gas because like, I swear, we were only talking about Peter Quinn the other day, which I said, that never happens to me. Do you want... And now it's happened to me twice in one week. What's you're, going on? Coming all of, Something over... in the air here at UCH. I think... <laughs> But you, do you want to know something else yeah. that may swing you back in Peter Quinn? He can sing. He's a really good singer, that actor. No. A really good <gasps> singer. He is theatrically trained. He's a, he's a British actor. He's a really good... I know, because when I heard him speak for real life, in real life, I was like, oh my God, I love you more now. Like, I don't yeah, know why. Yeah, he's a it's really good singer. His accent is so good in Homeland. And mm. then he just... So Brody as well. Brody went to Eton. That guy went to Eton. As Brody in... is... Brody's really Okay. Oh, is he what? His grandfather was the oh mayor of London. God. He's from aristocracy. They he, do amazing accents. Unbelievable. But like he has, there's there's a bit where he does, I think it was an ad for Sky, but it's like it's, he takes a uh, a monologue from something like a tello or something like that and he talks to the screen. It's one, some of the, it nearly comes out of the fucking telly actually. And it's only an ad for us. It's one of the most intense. That is the best cast show on um, that I've seen in a long time as well. Saul is another one. I just absolutely obsessed with him. I just think oh, they're yeah. all really yeah, strong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Characters. Look at me getting absolutely carried away with Homeland. <laughs> this is, do you know, do you know, if you haven't seen a peeps and you're like, seriously, you're missing it. Well, we've given away nothing, but it's, it's, no, it's, it's just a quality show. Like, excellent. it's, again, you can't put, but sure, Samantha's one opened with 15 minutes talking about her passion for boxing. So, I mean, Samantha one that's the, passion that's, for boxing. That, she, oh, she's mental for boxing. Mental what? part. Oh, actually, I remember that in 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 rehearsals, somebody was was joking about the Mayweather. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's me. She, yeah. Oh, well, she got yeah. Scorpio at me she straight really away. Did. Like, yeah. like she's but like, are she, you slagging Mayweather? She came clean though in the watch we got in the watch we got in the the interview. She was chatting. She was like, I there was something in me. I was always a Mayweather fan, but. Yeah, he's an Irish guy, and he's I not, know. you know. <laughs> so she, she she turned heel on me like so. But that's the beauty about podcasts, and it doesn't matter what you say. That's gas. I love it. I didn't know. I was like, are you going to ask me questions? I mean, yeah. Like, when you do, you, you often like, you see more and more I'm getting, it's good to always like know somebody prior because yeah. sometimes if you've only met somebody for the first time, then it gets a little interviewee. Yeah. But if you, we've known each other now since before last year, so. Before last year. Well, before Tom. last year. <laughs> I'm working, I'm working my timeline now in fucking pantos. <laughs> The new year for me doesn't start until two days time. We met each other as Barney and Bell. Barney and Bell, <laughs> Jesus! It was more intense. You had a lot more intensity in you last year. Oh, you when you were. Dear. I have. Um, plus, yeah. you're just getting the, the the gym off the ground, so you're up to your conquers they, in work. I, I'll tell you now, and this is like just take it to the serious term for a second. I've never felt this tired in all my life, and it could be just that I'm getting a little bit older, Thomas. But I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I should put on my old woman's clothes and just wear it full time. Um, but I think it's more the gym opening that didn't just happen in August. Like that's been going on since November of last year. That's what I mean. You were as in twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Yeah, and then we opened it in August twenty seventeen. And then we went uh, like I had the first few months of a business before I started this contract. Yeah. 
And I swear to God, I'm like, okay. I'm like living off coffee. It's like literally they should just put like a little drip in my arm and just keep it flowing because it's just the only way. Anybody listening, if we can get a sponsorship for Leanne, she will. <laughs> she will do it. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, so it's open anyway. We opened it, it's done. And now we're in January in the gym. So once we finish this on the... Are you having more Shall crack we? at this year's panto than you did other um, years? Because you seem to be really having... Your character is very funny. Yeah, I have a better... I have a better ability to to be in on the jokes, if you know what I mean. I don't, I don't think the fairy is particularly funny. I think she just... She can get away with being in on the jokes with other people. Yeah, Whereas when yeah, you yeah. play, like, the princess or uh, that role, uh, it's always... That's that's always just for that's the kids. That's in the magic, it's yeah. The it's got to be it's the yeah, magic yeah, yeah. for the kids. Um, whereas the fairy is not. She's not your typical fairy either. Like I'm, I was worried about playing her as so like, like the way I do because it's she's not the old the grand. No, but she's a little sketchy. I like it. Like she's. God, I, we need we need a visual on this because I'm giving you all the hand gestures, but I'm not explaining. I know. Myself I know. Well. <laughs> that's the thing. You see, I I we are in talks. I'm going to have most likely a studio. But it'll be probably based out of a comedy club in oh, Dublin. Wow. So we're, we're going to, like, I have been doing a lot of them when I'm up in Dublin. I normally do them from the International Comedy Club anyway, which is a great setting. So I'm yeah. going to be filming them as well, as Amazing. per as per the customer, or as per the customers, as per the guests are actually happy with being filmed. But I mean, if you want to be recorded, you're typically all right with being filmed. Amazing. Do you know? So it's just to give it another dimension. So when you do something like your beautiful hand gesture that you, Leanne wand. is doing right now, <laughs> if you imagine the most uh, Disney style hand gesture, but it's that's the thing. Like people, more and more people are just really digging this because they're like, eh. And people like Evan, one of the the dance captain, he's only nineteen or whatever. He's like, what do you mean a podcast? He'd no concept. Genuinely though, like I didn't understand. The whole, like, what went into it, first of all, I didn't understand that. And then I didn't understand that, like, that you basically, you uh, record it, you edit Mm. it, you put it out and everything every week. It's Mm. amazing. That's a lot of work, Tom. Yeah, it is. And sometimes you're going, oh, what a pain. But no, I'm committed to it. I'm committed to it. And there's points to where it's, look, it is, it's really good for, it's, I'm getting better at the chats and all the rest of it. And people are, but it also, I think... It's handy for people to just kind of go, oh, the Tom fella. You know, it's good for self promotion, yeah. but also there's a point. It, there will come come a point and where Chelsea's other half loves your podcast. Yeah, exactly. I, what's his name again? <laughs> Glenn. Glenn, how are you, Glenn? Uh, Glenn. Chelsea is just beautiful. Because she said it. Chelsea, uh, she is a consummate professional too. Mm. Cause Chelsea, like she, by God, Richard she, says she looks like Kylie Minogue in her, like in her younger days. Like she does a bit. I can Minogue. see that. Yeah, you I can do see it. Well, and she's pint sized. So but that. she's she beams when yeah. Chelsea walks around the place. She's beaming. This no. is Glenn is loving this now. Oh, he's loving this. He's loving we it. We better talk about Glenn. <laughs> yeah. Well, I said it, said it to Chelsea. I'll be down. I think I'm down in uh, um, February. I think I'm down in Cork. So he's based out of Cork, apparently. So oh we'll... my God, go and, like on an airfield or something and do a podcast yeah. live on the runway. <laughs> well, no. What I'll do is I'll get him into the comedy club. They can come see me actually Fab. tell some dirty jokes. Oh yeah, you see that was you the other night when we when when the. When we were off stage, I was like, Tom, go out there and tell some jokes, but keep it clean, Tom, but keep it clean. <laughs> I had to double look at you and go, really, Leanne? Really? You want me to go out there? And keep it clean. But I have done kids' comedy. I have done kids' mm-hmm. comedy. I have. No, I'm, and you get... Do you know what? People don't give kids enough credit. People think that they just want to be talk about clouds and fluffiness. What kids want to talk about is boogers, snots and farts yeah and it cracks all kids up yeah. they just talk it cracks me up and totally I'm a kid clearly. I'm 36 years of age yeah. Dale Cronin accidentally farted yesterday as we're about to go on and it made a tr- look how much you're laughing I did not know that he, he just went sorry I'll just and he stood over and I say he the sheepish look on his face I said what is he doing over there beside me just as we're about to go on and he just stood over to the corner and I think he definitely thought it was going to be silent and deadly, but this trumpet, look at you, this trumpet it genuinely went, <coughs> I had to fucking hold on to the wall beside me. I was laughing so hard. The two of us, there was tears coming down our the fucking... tears because <laughs> I'm laughing at Dale listening back to this podcast yeah, and he's yeah. telling everyone. She just, just oh, one it, on the side but he didn't stage. mean to. He just genuinely thought, I think oh, it was going to be a quiet little one and it was just this... God, I'm very fond of Dale, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of looked at me like that look that you, do, do, do you know when your dog has farts and it doesn't know where it's after coming from it's like what's that noise and that was tail for a split second <laughs> but then, 
<laughs> well, I'm not telling you any funny fart stories, Tom. I'm just, I'm a lady. I'm just no, you don't. Of course you don't. You don't fart. You don't fart. Ladies don't. I don't know what it says. Like, I know it's the ladies don't sweat. They glow. Perspire. No, they glow. Oh, is it glow? I, I, <laughs> okay. I just, I just can't. For some reason, I give you the, the official term for sweating. No, ladies don't sweat, Tom. Yes, they Another fancy word for sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. How did you... When was your first panto? Oh, God. So I did a couple... Um, oh, God. I did a couple with Limerick Panto Society who were over in the lime tree yeah, at the moment. who were in um, last night. Who were in last night. Actually, my very first panto was Emma O'Driscoll was the lead girl and I was her... She was made Marion and I was her... Her... Handmaid. Helper? Handmaid, exactly. Yeah. I can't think of the name of it. I was going to say her maid, but I don't know if that's what it was called. But um, that was my first panto. That was my first um, time having a lead role. Okay. Then the following year, I did Goldilocks with Limerick Panto Society and I played Goldilocks. Now, I knew I was in Eurostar at that point and we were going to be starting filming in January. Yes. But I wasn't allowed to talk about it at that point. Um, so then I went straight into Eurostar in the January. That finished in the middle of March and then the Gaiety cast me for Cinderella that Christmas so or they did, cast me or did Limerick Society miffed no because I think they they re- like they appreciate they realised yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was the gaiety like yeah. yeah so um, so we went to the gaiety then and actually that was my first panto with Richie um, in the gaiety Richie Hayes Richie Hayes okay uh, he played Buttons and I was Cinderella god that was that was 10 years ago this year like 10 years ago incredible um, then that like, Leanne, you must be only 15 or something. Oh then. my god, I, I just I never. <laughs> I think I was 12, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, thank god uh, there's no um, video camera. Trust me, Leanne. The lines on her face are telling a, you otherwise. Ah, stop, will you? Stop. Um, but yeah, so that was the first time working with Richie. I actually had my audition with Richie. He had to read against me. Like, he had, he was already cast. He'd been in the gaiety for years and years and years. But I mean, they always bring someone in to read against yeah. you. And Richie was in there. And I remember shitting myself. Excuse my language. And he was just so nice to me. Yeah. Took care of me. It was like It was in the gaiety theatre in the green room. We did the audition. Once that show had finished, I think we had about 104, 105 shows. Um, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, that finished and on the night it finished they asked me would I come back next year which is like I that, that never happens wow. I was delighted Jesus the night off so that was going to be um, Jack and the Beanstalk and that's where I met George George McMahon so right I've known George McMahon Rachel Smith um, all of the guys that would have been down here for years from that time um, and then I didn't do Panto until we started here at ECH because I just went my my work went off on a tangent. I couldn't be taking three months off to do Panto yeah. at that point. So yeah, so that was just the two at the Gaiety or the two at the Limerick Panto Society, the two at the Gaiety, and then six here at UCH. So. But you are like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my God, it's my tenth Panto. That's it's your amazing. actually your tenth yeah. class. And then the gym, the gym. Mm. Were you always like? Did you always. play sports? No, I never played sports. <laughs> Why, 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 do you, why is that such a ludicrous thing? Because <laughs> my family would think that's flipping hilarious. Like, why? Because why? I'm, I'm like no hand-eye coordination oh, ra- whatsoever. Really? My sister is a sports player and my mother would have been an amazing, amazing like ga player. Um, my sister's the same. She played football um, until she'd done her cruciate. Ew, and then lovely. she's not played football since. Um, but the, but yeah, no, I wasn't. But I was into the gym and I was into running outside and I was into exercise and just and I was into it more I'll be honest when I was that age yeah. just so that I could stay slim yeah. like uh, that's why I got into it then as I went along and the, some of my friends throughout the years some of the guys I used to hang around with used to play rugby and they were into their weight training they introduced me to it um, and I'll remember this is gas I'll tell you the story now I remember <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully on a tangent here like. no that's perfect I love that Oh, wait, this one is gas. Up to your, yeah. Sit yourself down for this one. So, yeah, you so do take a seat. Yeah. So, then, obviously, my current boyfriend, uh, or fiance. Fiance. Jesus Christ. Christ. Um, it, he owned a gym and he was a personal trainer. But before we met, I was like on a break from men hating men. Ugh. Ugh. Like, you know, one of those one of those periods of your yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and I remember sitting at the back garden, I was reading The Secret, the book. Oh um, yeah, and yeah, I was, yeah. came to the chapter on relationships, and I read it anyway, you know. And then I closed the book, and I went, "Okay, I'm now open to having a man <laughs> come into my life." And then I went to the book, and I wouldn't mind if he was a personal trainer. <laughs> and literally two weeks later, I met David. It was like so weird. I was like, "I just brought 
brought you into my life through the secret. Oh my God. <laughs> Have you practiced the handshake and everything? You know, the, the dominant, did you get to that part of the secret? Oh my God, have I, have I missed a secret handshake? Well, I should show you the... Well, this is to, to take do, dominance. Is this the power or the secret? It's a, it's it's the same person that wrote the secret has another one <gasps> about. And it's all about... Out, you don't. It's Dick. You're doing fine with Or maybe I just read the chapter on relationships. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that book really spoke to me on relationships. Yeah, Leanne, you just went straight to the chapter on relationships. No, no but there, there's a bit... like I sh- Again, this doesn't make good podcasting, but if you hold your hand out, we would normally both shake hands on it. So you, our two hands right now are on it straight level bar but it, what the, the secret and these other ones will teach you to do is the power move so you meet somebody for the first time eye contact but you're up you turn <gasps> down on their hand and you basically oh, so I know people who shake my hand like that and they're doing it on purpose it's basically again for, for the <gasps> for the people listening it's basically your hand comes From at a downward head. angle yeah. so you twist down into their wrist to show you watch Trump he does it to everybody <gasps> yeah it's yeah I just, changed my handshake yeah Oh, yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. There you go now. And always. I'm flabbergasted. There you are. I'm like trying to think. My brain is going wild going, who shakes my hand? Like I guarantee that? you'll start noticing it now. Oh, I'm going to. And notice, notice if you notice people that stand too close to you. For, as Irish people, we don't like people standing close to us. It's it, we're the, genetically and f- physically, we do not like. We're the, we, I we, don't think that. That doesn't apply to me, though. I'm weird. I love being like. I'm cosy. Don't no, I, well, no, of course you are to your place. friends and stuff. But what I'm talking about is in, say, somebody you miss for the yeah, first yeah, time yeah. in a meeting. You don't want them standing on your toes. No. Well, a lot of other nationalities are totally kind of okay. But we physical distance, we need something like, it's almost two feet we need. Other nationalities are okay. They're down to about a foot and a half. Mm. It's because of dense populations. Whereas we like, we're, we're only two generations away from the fields. Do you know what I mean? So we like a bit of distance. But you'll find people that have done the same thing with that handshake they'll stand that bit close to you too or they'll walk quite close to you in a I'm still trying it's to it's all power moves my hand like, like that. I guarantee you Tom <laughs> I just, I'm just all about the high fives I, I just <laughs> I'm really thinking about that one now yeah it's that's going to trouble you now it's going to trouble you now going to be like in the middle of the night oh my god it's <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole no. She yeah. she came across so nice. Well, aside from the hair today, so basically, I summoned David into my life through the. You power summoned of the him into your life through the power of the Does secret. he know this? No. <laughs> <laughs> he does now. <laughs> um, and then that, then, yeah. And he's then, such a nice old devil, isn't he, Dave? He's a devil, is right. That's the good way to describe him. And he's him. a nice old devil. He's nice, like well, he's, he's a heart of gold, but um, but he's a devil. <laughs> <laughs> it's that look, like. He's a dead man if he ever. I'd kill him. <laughs> he knows I'd kill him. I do kill him though. I'm yeah. awful. Um, but people need that in their life, don't they? They do. They do. They absolutely do. He's he's like everything that we've done in the past few years. We've done like together as well. We we opened the gym together yeah. as well. So I don't know if that's widely known information, but he's like so. It's 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 nice. And people say you shouldn't work together and live together, which is a hard combination sometimes. But what we do is we make mm. sure that the two of us are never in the gym at the same time. Yes. Well, that's only healthy though. Like and that's one of us is at home and one of us is in like the gym. that is only fucking healthy. Like we have had m- myself and herself have had businesses together, like mm. and stuff. But I say business together, like we would. But we again, we wouldn't be on each other's fucking feet. No, it's important. It's so important. Um. But, but yeah, so he was basically the one then that kind of really instilled the fitness thing into my life. Yeah, at that yeah, time. yeah. But when, uh, when, uh, when he was obviously working and, and owning a gym himself and then and then um, then I took it seriously, let's say. Because I was doing things wrong for so many years. Yeah, of I course. I didn't even realise I was. I yeah. Was, I, I just was. It's And again, hindsight's a wonderful thing when you're in your 30s. <laughs> <laughs> huh? oh. I know it's unbelievable, but I am in my thirties. <laughs> you said that with almost a drunk look on your face. Like I know, I know. It's, it's like, like I don't blame your shocked face. Like yeah, no, please, I was gen- genuinely please shocked. Relax your jaw. It's fine. That's why I thought mid twenties tops. Mid twenties. Twenty two. I told you. I'd pass for twenty two any day in a dark room. <laughs> 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 See, you said you, you you were telling me that you, like we were talking about shaving off words and stuff and said this to me. But you were, you have natural comedy timing, like I think I learned it from you, Tom. Oh, it's not all from me. <laughs> I'm not going to take all that all that from. But you do. But also, I ruin every joke by laughing at myself. Like, no, if I try and like so say on stage. There's a little bit of room for me to be funny with Richie, Richie yeah. Hayes. And uh, when when that happens, I I like I kill the joke myself because. I'm <laughs> I get myself and I'm gone. Trust me though, that's I honestly I one of the I used to write jokes for 
purely what I thought people would find funny. That was the premise of how... But then it was kind of pulled up me by the very great Tommy Tiernan. And he went, why don't you just write him because you find him funny? I went, well, I kind of do. He goes, no, no, you, your premises are good, but you're not writing them like you would find them funny. Yeah. It's just write them funny. Trust me, if you find a guess, I said, what I... He says, look, those people will find you then. Then you'll find your, your fan base. And when I started... And I, I have found myself bursting my whole laughing at my own jokes because it'll come out a bit different than what I meant. Yeah. And I'll be like... <laughs> 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 and people get on board. They go, yeah, that is, yeah. That is childishly funny. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're just after reminding me of Hayley Joe there. So Hayley Joe is obviously playing Cinderella in the panto. <laughs> Who went off, by the way, on her podcast, she went off on so many racist tangents. Oh, stop. I'm after going. I can't even remember what we were talking about to start with. But Hayley Joe on stage every night, I say to her, uh, you big legend. And I poke oh, her yeah, with yeah. wand. Oh, do you poke her? Yeah, I go, you're a big legend. <laughs> and she, yesterday, after doing that, she went... <laughs> Did she? <laughs> <laughs> and I can't, I can't detract from what I'm saying because... Music kicks is in yes. at that point, and I am timed to the music and what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm like, oh god, don't look at me. No, she's going to make me. It just came so out of her like the, uh, this lovely Cinderella, and she's like, oh yes, boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good, and again, probably people who aren't on stage won't find that funny, but it was just gas. Well, that's the whole premise of comedy or comedy of, of panto and theatre is that there are cues. Yeah. So uh, there are words that are cues. So you can't, you couldn't enjoy that moment properly because no. the cue was like you. Would oh, they were about to, you know, turn on the, the music, and you know, you, the, yeah. the mouse was in full flight, and oh my god, there'd have been no transformation. <laughs> it's, it's, it just happens. Well, my whole scene is done to and it's exactly. It reminds me of, do you know Holly Willoughby and yep. Philip Schofield? So there was one of these, I love watching their bloopers on YouTube. I'm telling you guys, best. if you've got 10 minutes, just go and watch them. Because they're, they're on morning, yes. it's morning, morning ITV or yeah, BBC or something. On, um, oh my ITV. god. But there was one of them where she does the same thing. So she's laughing so hard with Philip and she goes, <laughs> like, <laughs> and I just, I watched that clip about 22,000 times. I love it. Like, I love the two of them. I think they're gas when they can't breathe. I, I wanted you so to stick in last year, actually. There was a bit, I remember, where you were just joking at, in rehearsals. And you wanted me to snore. Yeah, but it was, we, you, you know it was funny. <laughs> Even if it was a planted snort, I think I might do it. I was. I'm I think thinking it is. I might do it to Richie when, you, when we're like when we're going. And down the one to where the bed. you're shocked by your own snot, <laughs> snort. Yeah, the, I just think I think that's genuinely funny for everybody to see it. And because and then you're cracking up yourself because like a snort is fucking hilarious anyway. But I don't know why. What was the line though? And where was I laughing? And then I was going to say I was going to snort. Like Bell doesn't laugh. No, there was a bit. There was. I don't know what it was. Oh, what was it? I, I, can't, I can't remember it's but it bad. was it was where you just ch- no she just chuckles a little bit and then it's, but it was st- that we were to get t- totally surprised by that moment but isn't it mad what makes you absolutely crease on stage that wouldn't make you crease when you're oh no, like, no, no. in regular life but when you when somebody does something different on stage or by on purpose or by accident and it's just the funniest thing ever in life like because I suppose you see we know what's what's normal what's normal and what but what is resting on every single word that somebody says like Richie today was doing a bit where he has he has a, a line up of words to say from the the wonky donkey scene yeah. and it's like it's clanky wanky oh no it's not clanky <laughs> wanky but that's that's exactly what happened right not wanky but he had clinky it's just a fucker started making up words I'm convinced wonky, wonky, he was winky wonky like clinky he, but he, he, got, he stuck in the word monkey in the middle of it and I went what the whole premise again for anybody who hasn't seen the panto is that myself and Dale back and forth are talking about this this pantomime the horse that he's on and we're going it's a, a bit st- it's a bit stinky or it's a, <laughs> and, it, and he's back and forth but it's a stinky wonky donkey well it's a bit this and it, today he just stuck in monkey in the middle of it and I looked at him and went monkey he went I know monkey and, I, and Dale was about to say his line and I took off I couldn't think of my next line couldn't think of it. <laughs> Nobody in the audience got it. Everybody was looking on. Why? Nobody. Why? What? No. That's the joke here. Yeah. No. Yeah. Took off. You but it yeah, makes you it. just like it, the same happened the other night. Um, I think it was actually today where we had reblocked stuff for, and I was going to oh, push yes, yeah, Richie yeah. away. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Looked at me going, no, 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 and I'm like, oh God! And I don't know what to do. I didn't know my next line. I was like, and I hadn't done anything wrong for anyone else to see. But in my head, I was panicking. I was like, oh my God, I'm not. 
supposed to do that? Because it, <laughs> Gas, li- like I have to say, because there's been one or two points where I, there's one point where I meet um, uh, Lady Leinster, which is Sam- Samantha, where I'm to speak to her and ask her how, how her evening is. Oh, yes. She'll throw me a curveball every single I heard. fucking time. My favourite was yesterday. Oh, if it's, if it's booze, we're, if it's oh, yeah. booze, I'll have a G&T. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> like, brilliant. Beautiful. Like, I was in my dressing room going, what does that mean? And then the oh. penny dropped. And then I was when like, she said oh. it, I just went, "Oh, that is gorgeous! Well done." She's so good at those. Oh, on she's stage. so good at like we, they could have left me and her together now today, especially because the a queue didn't happen, and uh, the, the one of the cardboard cutouts didn't come on at oh. all. So we were just bantering back and forth, and we got there was a look between us. And we went, "If that doesn't arrive out in the next three seconds, we're off to the races. Yeah, we're off to the races." <laughs> And she like she's so good at it. She's unbelievable, very yeah. Quick with the and like another um just uh, uh, scenes that she does as again with Richie. The, the two of them are just so quick. Like, oh they yeah, just get it. It's gas. Oh, it's so funny. She's she's brilliant, Samantha. It's a ta- great crack. They're talented. It's the dirtiest laugh I've oh, ever heard dirty, in my life. Dirt. <laughs> Which you all have heard from the last. Oh podcast, yeah, I'm she, sure. Her, her opening fucking thing was just laughing because she was like. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually passed her dressing room. Uh, were you doing the podcast in your dressing room? Yeah, a couple of days ago, yeah. I think I passed it and I was like, what is Samantha laughing so hard at? <laughs> She's just the... full flight yeah. in her dirty laugh. Oh, it's a quality laugh. Like an... Oh, brilliant. But do you know what? The One thing, like, I, I have no concept of... Because I didn't... I had never done panto prior to last year, the first one. Like, I'd never done anything bar some small plays when I was tiny, when like, I was four. That's beyond me. And, like, I think that your character now is completely Tom. Like, he could be called Tom O'Mahony. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Tandini? That's Tom O'Mahony. <laughs> yeah. But you know what's funny is that people almost every every single show when people have met me afterwards or walking across the car park, people go, I didn't recognise who exactly you were until you did the D4 accent. Until oh, I do. You're, yeah, then they yeah, go, no, oh, Jamo yeah, and yeah. I have a right. But you get a laugh off that every night. Like, oh, people yeah. are like cued in. And also my favourite part is when in the show is uh, Tom has a, a part in the show where he like doesn't speak but just does actions. <laughs> Oh, and he's oh like yeah, Mr. when I'm pretending. Oh my god! I was trying to think because I knew I'd gotten that inspiration from somewhere. Where I'm trying to explain to the princess who uh, who princess, Dale I mean, actually yeah. is, and that's not me, the prince. So I, and it was only it was it was Zoe who had. It's like Mr. Bean when he's yeah. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all oh, right. Well, that was never. See, the great thing was they left me off the leash altogether. That was that was written. I in. think they no. I think they really like. I think like obviously Trevor and Richie um, were co-writes on the panto yeah. yeah so I think they really 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 thought about Tom O'Mahony when they wrote that oh they did yeah it was, it was written it's around amazing, me yeah like, it was amazing even Trevor I remember say, he said it to me way back he went if they let me write everything I want like, to like full sure if I was sitting in the audience you'd be my favourite character like oh, full good. sure That's... I'd be just in knots for the night like well Belinda uh, our Hayley Joe's mother she 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 came up to me because she's been to the show twice. She went, "Don't tell anybody." But I, <laughs> I love every time you come out onto the stage. Oh, said the I same kn- thing to me, Tom. Oh, you, <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! I was fishing there, and I she knew didn't, it. She didn't. She didn't. No, she did. Belinda she Murphy did. would not do that. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Heartbroken. Now. Oh. Do you know what? It's a lot of fun because, in fairness, there was a reason why they knew it. They they went, "Well, we're hiring a comedian." Yeah, let's let him be a comedian. Yeah, although I like genuinely, I know last year when you played Barney in Beauty and the Beast, it was like um, not so. Much, he was more comical in his in his actions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like Barney was my favorite last year as well. He just comical in his actions. That's just amazing. That's well, that's I was real. Acting. I had very little lines, so I, I better be funny otherwise. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so but it was brilliant, brilliant. But yeah, the fact that they left me off was really cool because it's like. Oh. So these are the only two pantos you've done ever. I think you told me that last year. Yeah, and you were looking at me puzzled last year too. Yeah, I, Leanne, I hadn't been to a panto ever. Oh my god! Until the first, oh, and then first your one we did. Of fire in the chase and all. Yeah, I had no idea, and Welcome I was running around with two panto. two broken ribs last year as well. Oh, do you remember that? I do, Leanne. I do remember it because it was That's like another century, isn't it? Just constantly spraying myself with cold spray, taking heavy, heavy. Uh, and me pain spending medication. half my life under a shagging sheet. Oh, <laughs> stinking sheet! Oh god! Oh god! The good times, you know. What What else would we be doing, Tom, with our Christmas? You know, relax. Absolutely, eating Fuck chocolate. Do you know what? Around, watching movies. This helps me get in shape because I've got a triathlon in March. You're doing a triathlon. Yeah. 
So a it's, real like a full length triathlon? No, well, it, I think in total it's fifty five k, but it's thirty. It's there's thirty cycling. Um, I don't know how much running, and then kayaking. Kayaking. Yeah, See, I would so the, the swimming part. The sw- that's the yeah. part, and it's kayaking. So it's going to be down in Kinsale. Um, no, Kenmare. So I might you see my whole family are ridiculously fit. Like they're all like dad just ran the Dublin City Marathon. Like so it's oh my God. and I was the one that played all the sports and I'm the fat ass one now. So my sister Siobhan who has her like her kids they're here tonight. You'll see them. They're ridiculous. The kids do squats and push ups at breakfast. They're the most gorgeous, ridiculous kids. They all they live outdoors. They don't want to be indoors. So then and then my other sister Matthew plays like five sports as well. Everybody's ridiculously fit. The whole families do mud runs and she stuff felt together. Like you have to see something. So Siobhan, my sister, went, Do you fancy doing it? I went, I have to. I have to. So she signed me up. So Have I'm... you ever sat in a kayak? Yeah, loads of times. Oh, oh no, okay. I've done loads of loads of rowing and sailing like years ago, like when I lived in Cork. Have you sat in a bike? Yeah. And you've ran the roads? Yeah. Oh, we were grand then, Tom. Oh no, I've done lots and lots of I used to compete an awful lot years ago, like so it's just a case of getting my shit back together. But you see, because I did all that stuff when I'm younger. It's. I have found it quite easy now to get into shape again. Cardio. Oh, if you do say so no. yourself. <laughs> Look, I can't sing or dance, Leanne Moore. I have to blow holes somewhere, right? <laughs> also, by the same token, I can get fat as fuck in two seconds too. Me too. <laughs> but it's so yeah. That so I gotta so get. Is that happening in March? That is in March. So and st- yeah, straight into the gym. Wow. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's not like I know my sis. My sister was going. It's fine, just competing is fine. I'm like, fuck, compete. I want to win this shit. Yeah. She's like, Tom, you're going up against. I said, I know, I know. But if I start with that m- mindset, I have to at least set myself a goal and try and hit that goal. Shoot for the moon. Yeah. Even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that is that if you're land the wall in the gym. Do a voiceover. Like, you should. Tom O'Malley shoots for the moon every time. <laughs> 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 just a montage of me running but the yeah so yeah I'm going to get that you know that t-shirt like pain is just sweetness leaving the body you know all those all those slogans put them around Please the house just have like little like pull down flaps or something on the t-shirt so you can change the slogan every time <laughs> so it's like you're starting off really upbeat and then you're towards the end you're going nah get me out of here <laughs> I'd, well I'd be Instagramming my fat ass in the gym anyway so you'll get to see me at Amazing. least getting back in shape oh my god shape. you're going to be my new fitspo for 2018 yeah 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 <laughs> I might even make an appearance at uh, uh, yeah down at Go Gym in Limerick because yeah I will I'll be, I'll be, yeah, you better oh I absolutely will I absolutely will we've got will. bikes we've got treadmills we could simulate a kayak somehow. A rowing machine. <laughs> we have a rowing machine. There you go. <laughs> I was thinking more like this. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, oh, we have loads of things you can use. We have a ski erg and everything. Get the upper body nice and strong. What did you call it? A ski erg. Ski erg? Yeah. Oh, okay. You stand up and you pull the. Yeah, I know. I know the thingy, but I didn't realize it was called a ski erg. Erg? Ski- I don't know. No, it could, you could totally be lying to me here and I'll totally believe it. You're making me question no, myself. Not, you're questioning your own equipment. I'm like, no, I said that right. No, it's right? a funny word. That's all it is. Ski erg. Ski erg. Ski erg. <laughs> Sounds like no, you gotta get a ski erg. Like a pirate? Yeah. <laughs> With a G. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. No, I definitely, no, well, do you know what? Let's make a, let's make a day of it. Towards the end of January, I'll come down and we'll do, we'll do a, a, yeah, because I, I I will have gotten s- at least to do th- a podcast with Dave. Yeah, He'd absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Oh my God, he burned the ears off you for an hour solid. That's fine. Probably that's two hours. You'd have some amount of editing. That's in it. fine. That's <laughs> fine. But you, that's the thing. Sometimes you think, lads, I know he's not the same. Next thing, when fellows get up on a roll, he can tell you all about his California days. <laughs> I wasn't going to make one mention of that TV show. I'm dead. <laughs> I wasn't going to make one mention in case... He actually loves talking about it. So of course he, he does. He says he doesn't, he's a of course liar. He, he was actually... I remember Dave. Dave was massive, wasn't he, one time? But Dave was like, you would put a pin in him and, and he, he burst. Would burst. He was massive, because yeah. I remember seeing... Not that he's not massive now, Tom, let's just say No, nah, I know, but he, I mean, he he's was... He's more slimlined, Dave. Well, he's in good nick. He's he looks good. like a man in good nick, but he... He plays GA now, you see, so that's what it is. Yeah, you he's can't keep that size on. She yeah, wouldn't cross the pitch that size. No. Like. No. But the because I remember he was in, he was in. There was so oh some dreadful. When you're starting out, you take all sorts of gigs. Like and this is a gig. Oh Jesus <laughs> Christ! It was put on in some bar over near Fibsborough or something. And I'll never forget. Do you, did 
do you know that she she's after resigning from News Talk because of George Hook's comments? I think Dil Vikramasinha. Did you ever come across her? I've met her once or twice. I think we did. Um, I think we did like the midday show on TV. Yes, Pop she's on that a fair bit. Dill was chancing comedy at the time, and I don't know if she was running the gig, but she. I was asked to go over and do this. Do a. Uh, Close the show at this fucking. Oh, I was just a disaster. It was in the middle of a busy bar. It had no business having a comedy club. Just trying. Hey, do do do. Shut up and listen to you know. Oh God. But in fairness, some people actually said, and I can remember Dave. He had a big head of blondy hair. Right. Was, was was he at the gig too? Was he a comedian? Is, no, 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 no. This is years ago because I can remember California was on pretty much at the moment, or had been on or whatever. I remember seeing him going, Jesus Christ. Fucking hell, he's massive. Yeah, and he was sitting. And he was quiet as a mouse, like sure. And I, I had, I had a reference. I had to reference him. Oh, of course you did. And he, I can remember. And he hated it. I can remember his whole face <laughs> going from and lovely tan to fucking cerise. It just. <laughs> <laughs> I never got to say that to him the last few times I've met no him. Way. I will say it. To him. I'm sure he was having a couple of points. He probably doesn't remember it, but it was just a moment of. Fuck me. I should say that I didn't know Dave at this point. So I No, you wouldn't that. have. You I wouldn't have. I didn't meet him till that was all wrapped up in good water year. On, water under the bridge. Water under the bridge. I knew who he was, though. My sister was uh, keen to inform me that he was her favourite on California. And that... Uh, it wouldn't be hard. A thumbs up from, from her, basically. Because um, I saw... I knew, obviously, I met Jay because Jay, who was in California... He was also my business partner. Go, Jim yes, Limerick. <laughs> and he's in... Uh, because it was him who we went out to meet originally out and because out we were talking gym. out oh, and go yeah, gym yeah. in Greystones and Jay showed us around she the place is fucking beyond massive and so much Huge. potential like but we were talking about filming a TV show of sorts there and stuff and oh he's your man yeah <gasps> like he had a ton of ideas and stuff so oh, we were just shooting but Jay it, is born for the screen like he's born to be funny and born to be entertain people he's just born for it well we talked about possibly doing a pilot I think we'll because Gordon you see Gordon wants to produce it but he's up to his eyes at the minute so we're just kind of waiting but the pilot will be almost it'll be a comedy comedy style but reality show but what it will be is most likely like home improvement style stuff love it because obviously I'm from a civil yeah, engineering you know, background you mentioned this to me and I and thought it was absolutely brilliant and, and it, honestly you could and he's great better. crack too like, oh so. he's gas and like whatever way he's like in real life like Jay sitting down like at the house having dinner or something he's normal but like still gas but you put a camera on him or you oh I'd say so yeah he just lights up the room like he's amazing he's amazing I saw then I was asked the I was asked well I got I one of the pod, a friend of the podcast, Richard Kiley, he was he's a fighter, an MMA fighter, MMA fighter, MMA MMA MMA. and he was fighting in the Three Arena a couple of months back, and he says, "Do you want to come along?" I said, "Love to." So I went along, and I saw I was sitting beside, I definitely recognised him. I was sitting beside. Um, how are we doing for time? Oh, sorry, um, four minutes to six. Oh, okay. All right. What time do you want to, to wrap up at? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yes, we, you have all your ma- your show makeup on and everyone will keep going. But anyway, I was sitting beside the other chap who I've never met. Um, he was on California. Low-sized fella with black hair. Carmack! Yeah. He was sitting there with a what can only be described as a harem. <laughs> of sized fella. He was. He's shorter than me, for Christ's sake. <laughs> nice. No, he is. Yeah. He is. No, but he looks quite low sized because he's about nine foot wide. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, he's but he very, was, he's very He was there with what can only be described as a harem of overly confident, scantily clad women. No, he's, what is he the story does there? Very well with the ladies. But where, where are you? Sorry, it I was didn't. always at the three arena to fight. Oh no, he just he just he has a lot of very very beautiful friends. Um, but yeah, McCormick's a ladies' man. He had a lot of <laughs> ladies with him. He did an entire fucking row of ladies with him. some superior. I've never seen such confidence out of so much women. They were like there was fights going on. They were taking selfies by the side of the cage and stuff. It was the most bizarre group of people I've ever I seen in my life. I don't know. I don't know Cormac as well. Like Dave. Like obviously Dave uh, would still hang around with Cormac and Jay some from time to time. But I don't know him as well as I would know. Uh, I would know Jay but he, I definitely know he does well with the ladies <laughs> he'll kill me for saying all this I get a phone call tomorrow oh. excuse me were you were you talking about me on the, on the on Buckshot <laughs> but to be fair I mean there, he wasn't making a like he, he wasn't making any bones about it he walked in with a group of of, of ladies I think I, genuinely some guys hang out with guys and I think Cormac's just like hanging out with the ladies <laughs> 
<laughs> he was doing a good job of it. Fair play. So yeah, so he has he's clearly involved in the way well, he's not involved in your gym or whatever. But he still looked no, very, he, you know, he, he looked very good in yeah. shape. Like yeah, no, he works out a lot. He works out in a couple. Uh, I've been in our local gym as well. Like where I'm living in Dublin, he he'd be working out there quite a lot as well, and you'd bump into him. But oh my god, he's he keeps himself in some serious shape year round. Like it's it never. It never fades, but I said Dave is uh, Dave is more the GAA now. He's yeah. gone back to play for his local team, That's class. Washington, so in Wicklow. So because it's 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 if you have any notion of sp- like sometimes the gym you can kind of hit a, like I I used to go to the gym only for sports because mm. I started when I was fourteen, kind of going to yeah. the gym and stuff, and it was for it was for sports for rugby. And then when rugby kind of, I got banjacks badly from that and kind of car accidents and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, I can't play rugby anymore. So, oh, I wrecked myself, Leanne. We'll talk about it on another Oh, day. my God. Um, the, yeah, the people of the podcast will go, Tom, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> They've heard it a few times. But no, it <laughs> oh, was... that again. <laughs> it was... Uh, but then I, I, I went... Do you know, I found the, the most dedicated I think I ever went to the gym. I was put working down in Wexford because I was running a site you down... You said that like... Dun, 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 but dun, dun, I don't mean dun. I don't mean Wexford town. I mean I was in a little village in the middle of nowhere that had the most unbelievable fucking gym. Unbelievable. Like like And all, is this the time where you felt like you really wanted to train then? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's because you're like yeah, but that's But no, I to be fair, I had nothing else to do in the evening. I was by myself. I had I'll go to I, the gym. It, well it was either there was nobody like everybody on the site was Eastern European. <laughs> Like it was pretty much almost everybody was Eastern European. So it was like, I'd just go back to the apartment and go, well, you know what I should do? I should definitely go to the gym. But then I started to get really, like there was a kind of a, there was a, like, oh, for the want of a, like there was really bromance amongst all these blokes who were like, yeah, it was just the most dude environment you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> all lads like fucking, hey, you're, you're and it, I, there was a, full, uh, right at the beginning, like when I was, like you're, I was in all right shape, but I was getting into good shape and lads were like, yeah, hey, hey, eyeballing you, like going, hey, you're coming along li- nicely there. <laughs> And at first I was like, well, all right, dude, you need to take that. You need to take that back to the fucking car with you because you have some latent homosexuality, clearly. So long as you're not like flexing and all in the mirror. And No, like- I wasn't. But like like, like the, the like the owner and the other, like other lads that knew me, I was out of town or whatever, but we were coming up and they're like, hey, you're putting on some uh, some great size there. Winking at you. Well, so- I think that's the way that people are in the gym. I didn't, because, like, I yeah, didn't expect no, this. Well, I d- I I'd never experienced gym, this. So. And then it was like, okay. But then it's after about three weeks, it was like, am- sound. Yeah. Sound. Oh no, that's it. When you're not used to it. But I go up to people all the time like oh my god you look amazing or oh my god this or are you really squatting but, that or, but women that's... say that to each other don't but they? I do it to men too do you? yes I do I think it's just gym talk like and as well like my big thing when you're in a gym is especially for other girls like try and make people feel as comfortable as they can because yes. they're yeah, shooting yeah, themselves yeah. walking in there Yeah. and gyms are kind of a uh, scary environment. I never cared about that. I don't. I don't know why I didn't ever care. It's actually gas because Dave's uh, best friend would be a guy called Greg, and his dad was actually my first ever personal trainer. And right. we didn't know each other until years later when Dave and I met. And then he was like, "Oh yeah, Greg's dad was your trainer." And I was Jeez. like, "No way! That's the secret. It's like, all the secret." I'm brought you, it full I attracted around. him into my life. <laughs> Um, but like his dad Terry would have been the person to make me feel really comfortable in the gym like he'd like right look and he'd be coming over to help and you right. with form and stuff and correcting things I was doing and um, and he actually got me into the boxing a little bit at the time but I was way too slight for it like I got one slap and I was unconscious <laughs> <laughs> Did, no, genuinely. The honesty I did, is beautiful. I it's did like... a, a white collar boxing thing one time. Oh, no. And the Sunday before, it was on a Thursday night, and the Sunday before was my last sparring session. Got a concussion, ended up in Tal Hospital for two nights. <laughs> Not funny. Not funny then. Very funny now. <laughs> like the whole. I remember going into work on the Monday, going no something. Does, I was actually on expose, and I was sitting in the chair going no something doesn't feel right. Like I feel like I can see ten of the people Jesus. here. And then I literally left um, the studios, got in a taxi, and asked them to bring me straight to the hospital. And I ended up having to stay there for two nights. We were getting ill and stuff. Like no, I was just like. The only way I can describe to you is I was not in my own body. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, 
what is going on? <laughs> just stone. <laughs> it's like a smack at the back of the head in my sparring session. To be fair though, they they put me against somebody that wasn't my usual sparring partner. Yeah. Because not a lot of people turned up to the training session on the Sunday, so I blame them. <laughs> or your enthusiasm to show up on the Sunday, like yeah. a good little sweat. <laughs> and really trying to outdo it. I was like, yeah, yeah, one clout in the back of my head and I was gone. The uh. the best yeah, the best personal trainer I have ever come across, she was in when I was it was here when I was in Lee Tom, thanks. You've never <laughs> personally trained me I'm sure you're amazing I'm sure you're amazing but she was yeah she she was a lady here in Limerick and she had come over from I don't know who she was working with here but I will mention no names that time it could be my stiff competition for Go Gym she's gone again she's gone again she's gone I, this is before your time before I'm older I'm older than you you see oh, you, I'm much you older than you. I'm way older three years don't give it away for God's sake! I've told my age about twenty times in this podcast. Yeah, you have actually. Yeah, yeah. But the no, she was she she had actually trained. She was a she was a PT for the uh, the Leeds Rhinos rugby team, rugby league team. Oh, and oh, my form was shite. And I was training with all the lads from Shan. All our, turns out, all our form must have been shit <laughs> because this was a gym now away from the one we typically use. And I just went with the lads one night, and she was there, and she was just kind of giving a couple of pointers to. I went, sorry, would you mind telling me if I'm doing this? And it was purely a bench press, and she was like, she was so open with her time, and she was because she wasn't actually employed there at the time. She became employed there, but she was just working out there. Turns out I'd been doing everything completely wrong. What I thought I was really strong, I wasn't. <laughs> I was just walking around with that closed in shoulders, you know, yeah. like lads do. They want that. I know, but like a lot of, it was a lot of guys, so especially like learn from the internet because they're afraid to go in and ask the question. Oh, no. I, oh, no. I'd, I'd always. I, sh- I love. I, I know. As a trainer, I've never I had any shame. Come up to me and say, "You might be easier if you did that with your leg, or you know, this yeah. with your." I, I there's no there's no shame in learning anything new. Not at all. Well, if it, you see, it's kind of an Irish way, but it's almost oh, yeah, like it driving. Is. We don't want to be told how yeah. to drive either, even though seventy percent of the people out there are terrible drivers, or at least have bad oh, habits. Amazing. In your class. Did you change that bulb by the way? No. no? <laughs> God damn it, Leanne! Did you get the bulb and I put it in for you? No. no! <laughs> <laughs> you'd know full well if you had to go there you'd be driving now and you'll have no light on that side I the cops know. will do you I have to get it Tom stop <laughs> outdoing me I'm like, stop pulling me out of the bus here <laughs> you were sending your fiancé to go and get it I was but he didn't do it either Jesus so. Christ you're getting pre- preoccupied with puppies I have That's two your puppies pro- now yeah you have two puppies what age is the other puppy so Toby is like three and a half now and Ben is nine, ten weeks and they're cavapoos is it cavachons Oh. <laughs> there is cavapoos. There is cavapoos. I'm not mental. There definitely is. Well, what's a cav? Ca- what's yours? No, it's not a cavapoo. Definitely not. Is there? It's a cav. It's a, a cavalier mixed with the uh, poodle. Oh, I God, swear to God. Now we're not googling it, right? We're not googling because <laughs> no. we're on the podcast, and I have a strict. No, lo- I have a cavachon. Okay. Well, you can lo- continue to look at me like I'm a fucking lunatic. <laughs> It's just because you said the word poo. Cavapoo. <laughs> <laughs> we're children. We're, the, we're, we're, the, well, we're, not, I was, we're not the senior members of cast. That's Richard and Miles. But we are. <laughs> You're dead. What? We could literally not be described the man, as the senior. He is the senior man on the thing. He's 50 years of age oh nearly. Oh my God. Isn't he 50? He's 47. He's in good nick. He's, no, he said himself that he was nearly 50 the other day. Yeah, in three years. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but I mean, he, he pointed out himself, but he's no shame about his age. He knows he's in good shape and all the rest of it, so he doesn't care. But it was, but still, we still la- laugh at the word poo. We did. This has come full circle, Leanne. <laughs> we, we are such children. <laughs> Snorts. Oh, and like I just said, kids' comedy. You you scoffed at me when you said, oh, you do kids' comedy. Look at us. We're laughing at poos, farts, snots. The word Snorts. poo. Snorts. We're fucking children. Yeah, we are children. And I'm proud of... I, do you know what? I'm like we Peter Pan. To- I don't ever 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 envision myself growing up even in the most adult situation where you're like being really serious and something I'm still I, I revert back to the little inner child in me and I'm like a little child at the end of the day or you have a Haley Joe <laughs> 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 yes and that's exactly it we're hey, we get to we just got paid for two months of work where we get to dress up like fairies I, sorry, and I look at myself in the mirror every day <laughs> I'm wearing like a little blonde wig like super glitzy I, 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 I spray glitter on top of everybody and yeah. I get paid for doing this so yeah. it's fant- I go out and sing a little Wonderland song 
a horse and carriage appear behind me, a glass horse <laughs> appears behind me, and um, and then everything is magical, and that's my job. Like that's insane. Yeah. So we don't. I was have actually going to work today, going. But you know what? I'm not a bit bored. No. <laughs> no. No. No, and there'll be withdrawals when we end in a couple of days' time. Oh, hundred percent. We're all like as, dying for the day off. Yeah. But then once it ends, you kind of go, "Jace, that was that was like re- was that really work?" Yeah, was it really work? It when is really to- work, though. It is. No, it's tough going. <laughs> but at the same time, when you stand back and look at it, like I was saying one day, we were all knackered. I think I it's turned. It's not the worst thing you could. I be said doing. it to Samantha. I said, "Right now, there's a guy freezing his nuts off, standing on a scaffolding somewhere. Yeah, cursing the it world. It is not the worst Just- thing you could be doing. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah." So it doesn't matter how old we get, Leanne. No. We'll always be just children inside. We'll always be children. That's the creepiest fucking thing I think I've ever said. But do you know what? We better go and do this show. Because the, the clock is ticking around. The two of us sitting. Where, where are the fucking Tom? Lads, I'm still waiting for this door not to open. The two of us stuck in the closet going, oh hello. <laughs> They'd never think to find us down here. This they is the would chair would never room. find us down here. I mean, I would love a visual on this room just for a second. I'll take a photo. Fo- There's a with- couple of scripts in there, look. Is there? <laughs> what we'll do is we'll take a photograph anyway and I'll put it up on Twitter so people know this is coming this is up and rare. they'll just see what the luxury that we, we're dealing with. So, <laughs> Leanne Moore, thank you very, thank very much you for, for your first me. ever podcast. First ever Not your podcast. last. We will have it back on when we have a special visual one. Yay. Our Go Gym is happening end of this month, early February. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>